everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. When I was a kid, I was astounded by the the magic that was the Autobahn. Because kids always talk about it in hushed tones, like, Do you, you know can the Autobahn? Speed right. as fast yeah. as you want. This was back in the days where this, the highest speed limit was 55. I can't even imagine that in these days. Oh. In, in Utah, there's certain parts where it's 80. Those, those they, trucks they in the day 15 it. are great, yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, but also, nobody still does 80. <laughs> To say, uh, yes, that's what everyone, everyone does. Everyone was doing 95 anyway, so. Right. Well, anyway, the Autobahn, the major highway system, as I found out, it wasn't like a, a single, single, like road, a single road. road. Yeah. Everything about this has been spoiled. But um, this is from Alley Cat Games, who normally does not make games this heavy, I think. Although, I, I know some people are going to say it's not a heavy game. You're wrong. But their games are lighter. The last couple ones have been with Dice, the Dice Hospital, Dice mm. um, Theme Park. Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Thinky games, mm -hmm. but this one d did surprise me. It's a lot of game in a little box. Um, the overview that I'm about to show you is with Kickstarter components. I think the only difference is like screen printing, but just as a heads up, be aware of that. Here we go. Here's a look at the game of Autobahn, in which players are trying to develop and build up the German freeway system on this map of Germany, but all the scoring is done over here in the office board area, where players are trying to bump up from these different desks into the lobby area over here, where players are worth two points per employee they have, or to get promotions within here so they can move up these paths and get an end-of-game multiplier based on certain types of conditions that they're trying to accomplish based on what they do on the map. So let's talk about the five main actions of the game. Players will have a hand of six cards of the different colors relating to the different freeways that they can build up. So the first action I'm going to explain is simply building up the Autobahn itself. The color of the card that you play determines what type of action you can do, where in on the map you can build up. So in this case, building a road, you take one of these roads from the round tracker, the arrow tracker over here, once all of these roads have been built, that'll be the end of the first era, you'll move to the second era, and once 12 more have been built, then you'll move to the third era, and that'll be the end tracker of the game. So the building action is very important. Example of looking at the building action, you pay this amount to build one link of the freeway system. And as I mentioned, because it's a white card, you have to do a white action. So I can build up one piece over here, I pay for it. I also get to develop the cities that are around it. So for example, this one gets connected at a level two, and then this one here, which is A2, levels up into a four. Let's say that a player now is going to, on the next action, do a develop action. If you want to develop, turn one of these highway tokens over, you would pay a certain amount based on which era you're in. You'd flip one of these tokens, and that's going to level up the cities that are next to it, so this four would actually become a six. This is going to be important at a later phase in the game. So that's the build and the develop action. Let's talk about trucking. So if a player were to play out a card here, they would look at that color Autobahn and they can put out one of their trucks. They have one truck at the start of the game. You can unlock a second with technology. So I could take this truck and put it onto any one of the stops over here, which is going to give me a good of that type. In this case, washing machines or appliances. And I'll load it right onto my truck. I'm going to explain the truck movement phase after I explain all of the actions. The last action you can do is you can build up a service station. You take one of your service stations from here, and you can put it anywhere on that color uh, autobahn, which has room for a service station. The last action over here is the technology action. You simply take one of these from the matching color, you take this key, and you put it onto one of the bottom areas here, and you can start moving up. This is going to make the action that you take of that corresponding type stronger, it'll give you a little bit of an upgrade. So that's the five basic actions. You'll notice you can do each one one time. This one you can do up to three times. If you play out all of your cards, at the end of the turn you're going to scoop up all of those cards. However, early, if you would like, instead of taking an action, you can just choose to scoop up all of your cards, earning money for each card that you scoop up. And that's the basic actions of the game. Now as promised, I was going to talk about truck movement. Let's say that you took any action in purple. I build up a service station over here. Now at the end of my action, because my truck is touching one of that, uh, that color autobahn, I can move it, and the amount of movement that you have depends on the area you're in, so I can move it two spaces onto the roadways that I have built, and I'm trying to deliver to these outside countries over here, and if I deliver that type of good, I can earn a bonus. Also, each player has a different one of these delivery boards. 
So I'm trying to deliver this down here, and if I deliver the matching type of good, I can put a token right over here, which I can then in the future spend to get a bonus of drawing up stronger cards or something like that. Or if I deliver a non-matching good, this is appliances, to an area that wanted automobiles, if I deliver a non-matching good, I can just get a coin bonus immediately. After you do the build action or the upgrade action, the develop action, you would take one of your employees and stick it onto the rightmost side of that colored desk at the office here. The next time you move an employee into that desk, if it's already full based on player count, you're going to slide everything over and then the person who gets booted out gets promoted to the office up here. So if I'm the red player, I really want to try to get my people, say, build up out of the red office. I kick these people, move them up. Now in the future, as I do get promotions based on this symbol up here, I can move this person up these different tracks here. The technologies that you unlock are important because you need to have unlocked certain levels of technology on these tracks over here in order to be able to move up your people into these higher multipliers. Certain bonuses you get over the course of the game allows you to move further on this track here, this green arrow symbol. When you get to these points, you can upgrade one of the markers on your player board so that that action can hold more cards in it before it is full. So instead of one, your develop action can hold two. As you get to certain spots, you'll get upgraded cards, which come with bonus actions on them, as well as being a card of that color. And then over here, this is where you can promote people up the offices into the bigger multipliers. After the last road of an era has been built out onto the board, you will finish out that turn. You will do an end of era scoring in which players will, based on certain connections that they're dealt at the beginning of the game, if they have a lot of upgraded roads on the path between the two cities, they'll get extra money, they'll get extra promotions. And the smoother and better the developed the roads are, they can get uh, all of these augmented. They can get these as additive bonuses. You are then going to go through each of the different colored autobonds and add up the values shown on all of the tokens that it is touching, add that together, and then divide it amongst the number of players who hold chairs at that colored desk over here on the sideboard. So the red player would get two-thirds of the value of orange, and then the blue player would get one-third of it. Once you have done that for all of them, you'll set out 12 new road tokens over here into the era 2. Play through the era 2. Once that is completely depleted, you'll add 14 road tokens to era 3. The difference with era 3 is that the yellow autobahn of the road is now an open part of the map. The German reunification has happened. All players get yellow cards into their hand, and they can continue playing until the end of the game. Once the end of the game is triggered by building all of these roads, you simply do the multiplication for all of the scores over here based on how many employees you have in offices, how many different countries you have delivered to, how many service stations you have built on the board, and for every $20 or 20 uh, money that you have remaining at the end of the game, based of course on the multiplier here times your employees, and that's how you play Autobahn. I really like the components. I like the little trucks picking up stuff the most. I don't know what it is. If you're going to do a pickup and delivery game... And you get to put, you get to like load the truck? Put it on the truck. That makes yes. me happy. I, I do love that, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, these are like the slightly upgraded pieces compared to normal, but I mean, even for normal, it's, it's a nice quality of production. But for me, the downside of the production is the art is really busy. The board's it, super busy. It is, yeah. It's a little hard to see. I also feel like the... You have the little route connectors with the flags and stuff. And because so many flags look like other flags, and I know that part of that is just my lack of geography skills in recognizing different flags for different countries, I had trouble figuring out where my routes needed to go to connect things because of those flags. If they had had names or something with them, something a little bit like more visually popping than seven different red, white, and blue flags. I agree, and I don't think we need to apologize for that, because I don't think it matters whether you live over there or not. Multiple colors, I need to be able to look at a glance and see those yeah. colors. You're right. And I, you're right. I found this, this map is a little tricky, and the fact that there are colored lines and things is going to probably bother some people more than me. But there's, yeah, the visually, I, I think it looks nice, but it's not necessarily functional. Yeah, the thing, it looks yeah. or great. Or as functional as it could be. It's it's functional. Yeah. No, I think it does look great. And I really like the theme of this. I like the idea that it takes place over several decades, the the last era of the game being the German reunification. I think that's a nice touch, you know, so then you get to open up that uh, east side of the board. 
I, I like the setting. I like the production. I like, for the most part, I like the theming and everything going on. Uh, and and I like so many different individual mechanisms of the game. And there's that, a lot of them. The reunification, the way that they put that in there mechanically is so interesting to me. Because I'm not a big history person, and I'm not a huge theme person, but when you can tie the mechanics so closely with that history that I like have to understand it to understand the mechanisms, I just think that's really cool. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's fine. I, I mean, I, I think the reunification is great, and it's an interesting theme point, but... I'm always very nervous when a game tries to shoehorn history into a game mechanism. It works here, but I think in this game, for me, it works against the game. Because it's really? like, oh, the last couple rounds, we're always working on this one rail system. Because it wasn't available before. And I said this off camera, but I, I really feel like Autobahn is a train game. To the point you I called agree. it a rail system and, and didn't even flinch. Oh, did I say a rail system? Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah, and I don't, definitely. I don't really disagree. It feels a lot like a train game. Route building and pick up and deliver and all of those things going Lots on. Lots of math going on. L a lot of math, yes. Yeah. yeah, right. So I don't, I'm not trying to put it down, but I'm just saying it felt like that. So where I'm, I struggle in this game for, for two reasons. And one is the reason, well, it's the same reason, but in two different ways. One is the restrictions. I felt like this game has a lot of artificial restrictions that are there and will probably interest some people. But for me, I'm like, ooh, what color should I build? Well, I'm gonna build these because they're the ones available. Near the end, I'll build this one. Or I'll build this one because I have a color card that matches it. But the cards is by far my biggest struggle with the game. I love the idea of playing a card and then picking up card. I love that, that concept. Like the, the Concordia retrieval. mechanism yes. almost, yeah. yeah. To be able to upgrade them, Oh my word, that's amazing. And this game loses a point on how much that disappointed me. The upgrades are like nothing. Not only are they nothing, but you can get like, oh, this one's really cool. Oh, we can't build any more red. You know, and I'm yeah. like, oh, now this card doesn't mean anything anymore. I want a card, if you upgrade it, that, that seems so cool in my head. And maybe yeah. that's a misconception, but I'm not gonna be the only one who I'm like, ooh, I wanna upgrade, I wanna do cool things. Oh, the upgrades aren't as big of a deal as I thought they would I be. I felt the exact same thing. And they're okay. not very easy to get either. So you, you work right. quite a while into the game. You're like, I got this upgraded card. I can build an extra service station once, and now the you know the white auto filled. filled up. Yeah. And they're they're very disappointing, and I, which is such a bummer because I like I said I love every almost every individual mechanism of this game. I like the idea of route building. I love pick up and deliver. I love that card system. I love the upgrading so that you can hold more cards in the same action spot. But the overall dish that those different ingredients make is kind of disappointing. It's a little bit restriction. It's a little bit that nothing is as, as whiz-bang exciting as I was hoping it was going to be. This is one of my most anticipated games of this year. Last year, but yes. Of last year. Mm -hmm. And and overall, I, I kind of agree that it feels like, oh, we're working a lot and not getting a lot of payoff because of the amount of restrictions that there are. Do you think part of that has to do with the scoring? Because this, the way that the scoring is, is that you're doing a lot of stuff that I think is a lot of fun, but it doesn't necessarily lead to points. You have to get those workers over to the tables. You have to get them promoted to get them invested in specific things that will then score. Is that part of what makes it feel like too tight and restrictive? They raise because a you're... good point. They feel like different halves of the same game yeah. almost. They, and, and, I, and I struggle to see as much connective tissue as I think the game wants me to see. Like I have to work at these things. I have to get employees out there. I have to get deliveries to lots of different countries or something. But that in and of itself isn't points, it's then moving the employees up those multipliers, which is points. Because I really, I really enjoyed a lot about this game, and I think much more than you did, Chris. Yes. Um, but I almost felt like it was two separate games that I was playing. I was playing this really cool drive around a truck, pick up and deliver. I loved the way that the card colors interacted with how you can move. The yes, gas that's, stations. that's a great mechanism. I yeah. loved all of that stuff in the game, but none of those things got me points. Instead, I was playing this other game, which the, the way that the points worked, I also really liked that game, and it gave me a lot of Kanban feels um, with the, the workers that you're trying to put up and move places and score points. But I almost wanted them to be two different games. 
Like I wanted more of both in a smaller package, if that makes sense. I, I could see that, or just have those two halves, but make them more connected. More cohesive, maybe. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. It's not like an easy fix. Like, oh, just put this Band-Aid on no, there. No, right, yeah. right. I don't know if I love that worker movement scoring thing, but I like the rest of the game. Um, <laughs> you liked all the stuff that didn't give you points. Yeah, I agree on that a lot. And, and I guess, but at the same time, I struggle on this because it gives me the same feeling as, say... Chicago Rails or games of that ilk where I often feel like, oh, these games always start from this endpoint and go here and they flow this way. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a game that starts here and lets me go way, whatever way I want to go. Yeah. And so I'm not as big of a fan of these, but I can see why people like them. So for me, this is like solidly a six. Um, it's a game that I'll play it. I'll have a good time. And then the next time I play it, I'm like, oh, are we doing the same thing? <laughs> is this the same scenario? And I know that some people will scoff at that and say, but there's so many little permutations in that mix. Yeah. You're right, but that just doesn't appeal to me as much. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do this time? Oh, I have the same stuff I did last time, except this time there's different cards out mm -hmm. there, and I'm not getting tricked into that again, buying those cards, upgrades. And I'm sitting there trying to think, okay, I bought this new card. I'm going to try to take it back in my hand and play it again. And, oh, it's so much work, you know, to get not that great of a bonus. Or here's a great bonus I got that I never was able to use. So that brings it down a little bit for me. But I, I know there's an audience for this. Well, obviously, Wendy likes it. There's an audience for this. And I can, I can almost tell you who that audience is to some degree, although mm -hmm. I would be wrong, I guess, in your opinion. I think it's, I think it's Lacerda fans. I think that it fits it's that like a niche a little bit. Yeah, because it's yeah. got that tightness feel, especially with the scoring and the, the actions. That it feels like that, that level of tightness, but it's a little bit smaller. So sc score-wise, I, I have to score this how I feel. I'm giving it a five. I really didn't like the total combination of everything together, which is a shame because I love the designers. I love the company. I love so much about what's happening, but... The game also feels like it goes a little bit long. During the end of era phase, you have to, okay, hold on, we're going to do math for about 10 minutes now. You have to add up each Autobahn, divide that amount by the different people in control of the offices, and you have to do that for seven different highways. It, the game doesn't have a great flow. It has good flow until it doesn't. It just seizes up, the engine seizes up for a bit, and you're like, okay, hold on. Wait, do we, put a, do we upgrade all the city markers out there? There's a lot of minutia going on. And I think it's those reasons where, where I agree. Each time I play this, I feel like so much is the same that I'm not really excited to play it out again. The, when I taught it to you, I was, I was kind of checked out about halfway through the game. When he was still excited, and I was like, ah, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll play a purple card. I'll start doing, I'll just do things to kind of move the game forward. It's very disappointing. It's a five for me. Well, I'm going to give this a seven. Um, I, I see the struggles with it that you guys all have. Um, and I do think that it fits that, like, super tight, like, people that like those tight games, people that like doing math and train games, you know, there's, there is all of that. Um, but I really like that pick up and deliver. I like the, the engine building that you do on your board as you have to pick, you know, one or two things to focus in and make that stronger, make it better. I really enjoy the card play, the mix of the colors, plus where you're putting them and what you're activating. I like the scoring. Like, there's just a lot of stuff I like about it. I do think it definitely has its flaws, um, but it's still a seven for me. I, I will do. play it again. I will give it the positive thing. I think this is not just another soulless Euro type game. I feel yeah. like there's mm -hmm. something different about this one. I don't think it quite clicks with me, but I'm calling it a train game because there's a lot of feelings to train games. It does. But this one does feel like it's a 2022 design, if that makes sense. Right. It's not a design stuck in history somewhere. Yes, it's... and it doesn't look like a train game well, in the also sense helps. of, like, also, I like the Texas highway truck and... system. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. That's Autobahn. Drive as fast as you want to. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. I already said my tagline.